Homestead. I, I, I added this to the slides simply because Jim and I had this issue and it's, and Jim was saying, I haven't seen this in 16 years and I thought, you know what, it's probably. I didn't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't actually, not at all. <laughs> no, I haven't seen this. No, he's actually, Jim's a great guy. So, all right, so I thought it's probably worth a brief discussion and it did come up already once before. All right, in the world of homesteads, there are two types. There is an automatic homestead, and there is a declared homestead. But an automatic homestead is this, is that if your home is going to be sold by force, foreclosure, bankruptcy, you're not making the decision to sell it, all right? If this be sold by force, and there's equity in your home, generally speaking, there's other, there's, you know, there's, the limit rises depending upon circumstances, but generally speaking, you're entitled to $75,000 in equity, which is great. Other states, it's higher. I, I had a home in which we were, we were doing a forced sale and the homestead, I believe it was Maryland, I might be wrong, was $300,000. So that means if, if we forced the sale of the property, owner would get $300,000 for my client saw a penny. All right, we still pushed it because the home was paid for and it was like $375,000. Ultimately, we settled, it worked out well. But different states have different amounts. So that is an automatic homestead. Then you have something called declared homestead, totally different. Declared homesteads relate to situations in which there is not a forced sale, all right? And you have to actively record a declared homestead. What that means is, in the event there is a sale, voluntary. I get paid a certain amount of money before the before the judgment, before, let me back up. If you're gonna sell and there's a declared homestead, you get a certain amount of money, we'll say $75,000, before the creditors are paid on the judgment liens, all right? So, in Jim's situation, the question was, did you have a declared homestead recorded before the judgment was recorded. If you can't record it out, you can't go judgment, declared homestead. Time-wise, declared homestead, judgment. And Jim's response was, I don't know. I said, well, let's find out. So Jim did his title work and title said, I, I, I can't refine a declared homestead anywhere in the title history. And so Jim, unfortunately, I go back to his client and say, um, you didn't file or didn't record a declared homestead and therefore you have to pay the judgment creditors who have judgments first, then you get paid. All right, and so that's how it works. So the moral of the story is recording a declared homestead is probably a good idea even if you're not even concerned about a creditor. For anyone? For anyone. 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 File a declared homestead just for that credit. No, a declared homestead is just a document, and the amount of it is a function of, much like a homestead, your age, your marital situation, uh, your, um, you know, because it'll go up from 75 to 100 to, one, to 150. And, and what bracket you fall in is a function of where you are in life. Age, marital status, things of that nature. So. And it's okay with your first to do that? Oh, yeah, it's, ju it's just a document. That just says it has no, absolutely no impact on the, on the secured creditors. It's, it's what it really does, it says, in the event I sell my home and there is a judgment lien, I am going to get a certain amount of money before my judgment lien creditor gets a penny. And if it's, let's say it's a $100,000 homestead and you have, you know, $110,000 in equity that you're going to get back, that means you get $100,000. Judgment creditor gets ten thousand dollars. If you haven't recorded it, you only get ten thousand dollars, and the judgment creditor will get the hundred. Really, really important. So, so yes, after, sir. After you record, when you buy a house, after that you file and record. Uh, declared homestead. homestead. Yeah, I'd encourage you to do that. Is there any downside to declaring a homestead? No. I'm not aware of any. So a regular title search will tell you if you've done it. I don't know if I did it or I didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, should. Most folks, the reality is, most folks don't do it. And can you, uh, can you declare a homestead if your house is in trust? Yeah. 
Yep, you can. Yeah, well, for purposes of our discussion, in order to be paid before someone who puts a lien on your home, you have to do you have to record it beforehand, as opposed to afterwards. The, well, that's, we're talking, well, homestead and bankruptcy are different issues. Yeah, they're different issues. Technically, if you want to get really, I guess, kind of technical, um, you, you, can, you can file bankruptcy, protect the $75,000, okay, because you have equity, and then maybe a couple years later, sell your home, and you, in the bankruptcy, you didn't do anything but the judgment, you, you let it sit there. But then when you sell your home, you have the declared homestead, and you're able to get that money in front of the judgment creditors. So that's how those two work, work together. They're, they're different, but, but they can work together if you have equity in your home. Do you still get the um, automatic one on top of the declared one? Good question. So think of the automatic, automatic homestead as a forced involuntary sale, separate, versus a voluntary sale, which is different. No, that's a good question. Yeah, yes ma'am. So Yeah, yeah. If you're going to note, if you record a document, it needs to be notarized, original signatures, all that stuff that you normally do when you record documents. So Good question. Yeah, yeah. But for five ninety five, I do. No, I can do it. I'm joking. <laughs> so um, uh, you, you can get them online and stuff. Don't hire an attorney. You don't need an attorney to do a declared homestead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes, sir. That is only the primary residence, right? Correct. And if you had a primary residence. Homestead that becomes rental. Correct. It wouldn't work. It has to be your primary residence. Yeah. Yeah. Good so question. When it becomes rental, you have to remove that no. Yeah, it, it, you can leave it stay there. It comes down to the time of the sale. Was it your primary residence? And as you probably know, there's there's a legal analysis to go through as to whether this is your legal residence versus not your legal residence. So but that, that's the issue. Well, what is that legal description of legal residence? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, I think the, the rule is um, over the last five years, you had to live there a couple years. Yeah, something like that. I, 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 there's, a, there's a precise rule, um, but something like that, though. Yeah. If you have a living trust or a legal trust, any of these make any difference in that status? Absolutely not. No, a living trust is, for, if we're talking about, well, we're talking about a revocable living trust, which yeah. most everybody has, or a lot of folks do. That means it can be revoked any time. All the, all the trust is, is you're just essentially taking your property and moving it out of you know, Len Herman's name and putting it into the name of the trust. But Len Herman still owns it. Len Herman can be sued. And I can go after the trust and get his assets. It provides absolutely no estate planning protection from creditors with respect to getting your stuff. People think, oh, it does. No, it doesn't. If you have a revocable trust that is from an estate planning perspective, it might be more difficult to, for creditors to figure out who owns it, who owns the trust, but it's not going to prevent me from suing Len to get his home just because it's in a revocable Trust. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So corporate, yeah, but even corporations have issues. Yeah, well, I'm not an estate planning attorney, but I know enough about, anyways. Talk to a good estate planning attorney if you like. <laughs> you want to have questions. Yes. Isn't there 150000 if their husband and wife own the property on Homestead? Good question. Yeah, so we talked about in Homestead, there's different amounts depending upon your life circumstances. So 75 is, is your lowest, typical single woman, single man, married, it goes up, and married on your age, I believe it's 65, it goes up to 150. So depending upon your age, your marital status, your homestead will go up. Exactly, good question. Yeah. Yes, sir? You made a point that, you know, in, in the other states where there's a $100,000 homestead, say there's a, hundred, uh, there's a judgment or you get 110 grand in equity, and $10,000 above that is paid to your judgments Correct. and liens and whatnot. What happens to the remainder of the amount of the judgments and liens that aren't paid? Do they just 
go away as part of the BK and part of the, they just accept that settlement? Or do they, do the, the, does the remainder of the unpaid balances of those liens follow you or the house, or, or obviously not the house because it's sold, but do the, the, they follow you um, until the remainder of those liens are paid? Does that make sense? Yeah, is it, did, did you file bankruptcy or did you not file bankruptcy? Well, for the purposes of this, we're, 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 we're filing BK. Gotcha, okay. So, so the question is, um, if you sell a home, and, well, uh, all right, so you sell, yeah, you sell a home, so you file bankruptcy, you get a discharge, right. okay? You have no legal obligation to pay those debts. So they're attached to the house. Yeah. However, you have a first, you have a second, and you have, let's say, three judgment liens, all right? So you sell your home, uh, you get the first $100,000. $10,000 goes to judgment lien number one, Two and three don't get a penny, all right? So what happens technically is that one, you have no obligation to pay it, but it's on the property. And so that property is going to have those liens attached. The only way they're gonna go away, the only way they're gonna go away is either through a foreclosure, which those are wiped out, or alternatively, those other creditors agree to some type of settlement or resolution. So it stays with stays the house. With Yeah, exactly, exactly. Good question. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Do I have a family trust and your, for, for example, um, I clear the home estate and I have like my name, my husband's name, and my son's name. So each of us get 75000 for the home estate. Is it like that? Okay, so you, you have a trust. And you, your husband, and your son are beneficiaries under the trust? Yes. Okay. Do you, so do you, each of you have a, so for the homestead, well, the homestead is going to apply to the property. It's not necessarily a person per se. It's the owners given their life circumstances as to how much at the time they, they try to invoke it. So if you and your husband, let's just say you're 70 years old, and you and your husband are on title plus son is on title, um, and you're eligible for 150 and your son's eligible for 75, what would be the answer? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't I, know. Right now I'm not sure what the answer that would be. That, that's interesting. You have two, three different people on title Two of them are eligible for 150, one's eligible for 75. I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. Is that answering your question? For example, if Google it, my husband and I, we are on the toilet, but I, I created a family trust. Correct. So my sons are on family trust. So if something happens, if a bankruptcy, whatever happens, or if we get sued on the home, so my question is, what is the home estate? Who gets the home estate and how much is it? Everyone in a trust gets the home estate? He doesn't know. Well, just no, use some dial. <laughs> yeah, well, are you, are, you about, well are, you about, are you talking about being able to protect equity in bankruptcy or are you talking about the homestead declaration? The homestead, like the declaration that I fight for, because automatically they send me. Then I yeah, the well, title, so, I just fill out the form and I can find me. Well, let's, let's do this. Um, it's a good question. It's also, the question is, if you have a trust with different folks on it, how does that play out in the context of bankruptcy or even the homestead declaration stuff? A um, little more involved question. I'd be more than happy to chat with about it afterwards, but we want to make sure to at least get these nice folks out of here at 12 o'clock and it's getting closer. So, uh, Break? How are we doing? All right? Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, that is the declared homestead. Um, <laughs> Actually, all right, equity and home. Let's talk about this. This is actually good. So you have a home worth 270, first trust deed of 158, you have a judgment lien of 96,382, you have a homestead of $75,000. So this is kind of how you do the math. You add up the first, you add the judgment lien, then you have this homestead of 75, you add it all up, and you realize, oh gosh, 
329, 382 is higher or larger than 270. All right, so that means is I get to use my homestead to impact that judgment lien. All right, so next slide is you take the 329, just the total of the amount, less the home value, and that's $59,000. So that means is that is the amount of money that you can protect through a declared homestead voluntarily. So you take that $96,000 judgment, you reduce it by $59,000, and you only owe $37,000. And your clients are like, oh my gosh, I love you. Because you just saved them basically $60,000. Yeah, but you need to have the declared homestead in place ahead of time. And the reality is most folks don't have declared homesteads because, and the reality is most folks don't get judgments against them. But the reality is it happens and it's bad when it happens. And you can't always control litigation. Do you think that's something that we should suggest to our buyers? Yeah, if you, you can. Know, say, hey, consider this, talk to your, talk to escrow or talk about a de declared homestead. Yeah, no, I think if, if you can articulate it to the client and say, listen, you may want to consider a declared homestead this is why it's going to protect you in the event of unknown litigation. Um, yeah, I think it's probably you a know, good maybe idea. Just that added little thing, but of course, like you said, we don't want to overstep our knowledge when we only know this amount, not that amount. So. Yeah, but if you think about it, it's a, it's a pretty simple concept. It, the it idea. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't cost anything. It's a document that they can put in escrow. Yeah. Ten bucks to file it at the courthouse. Yeah, it's really cheap. It's cheap to do it within escrow. Yeah, it's like here. The key thing is, I would encourage you guys to consider doing it through escrow. Because yeah. it's all done. Record title, exactly. have escrow. Say, listen, have escrow, do me a favor, record a declared homestead at the time you do everything else. And they'll probably say, oh, okay. I mean, it just it's seems simple. like that's that added thing that a lot of agents truly don't know about to that point. Yep, yeah. you're exactly right. Good point. Yes, sir. So if somebody declares a homestead at 75000 then they turn sixty. Good question. So when you when you record a, a, a homestead, you record the document, and then when, when that life issue comes up, at that point in time, you figure out what you're eligible for. You don't say I'm 75 or 100, 150. It's I'm eligible for 150 because I'm married and I'm 68 years old. So it changes. Changes, yeah. So you can record a declared homestead when you're 30, and you know 40 years later, it actually applies. Yeah. So, good question. So All right. Again, that was we don't need to no. No. Okay, no. Yeah. Okay. Right. A lot of math there. Any any questions on the math? All right. 